Hello, my name is Julian Fernandez, and I'm here to tell you about how literature can save the world. Literature. It has changed the world many times over. It has inspired genius and amazed civilizations. It's how we express ourselves, entertain ourselves, and inspire ourselves. Literature has made the world better 100 times over. But not anymore. Literature has been left in the dust by most people. In a survey done in 2011 by American adults, 79% of the people who did the survey had read a book that year. Four years later, that number went down to a 63%. Another survey done by American adults, the average number of books read per year was four. Let's do the math. One year, 365 days, four books. 365 divided by four equals 91.25. That means that if the person read at the same rate every night, and if all the books were the same length, that it took 91.25 days to finish one book. So what are people doing with their time instead of reading? Well, from my experience, it's going on the internet, on the internet watching movies and watching television. Even school, the place built expressly for the purpose of learning, has been dominated by talk of video games and social media. Compared to what it was, reading is dead. This has to change, because literature can save the world. And this is how. My first reason is, is that books can share good messages to the reader through their characters. For example, in Lord of the Rings, there's a very strong message about people from all walks of life coming together, overcoming their differences, and defeating common evil. This is best shown in the relationship built between Gimli and Legolas, two characters in the novel who at first dislike each other because of racial differences, but then become best friends, and risk their lives for one another throughout the novel. We can also learn from the villains in novels, for example, in Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows, Narcissa Malfoy is a character who had been shown to be cruel and prejudiced throughout, until she risked her life to save her son at the very end, and while doing so puts aside her spite for Harry Potter, showing no character or person is 100% good or evil. My second reason is, is that books have brought people from around the world together, in many different ways. For example, on the small scale, book clubs and book exchanges have been started around the world, and have achieved their goal of bringing people together closer through literature. On a much larger scale, countries and cultures have been exchanging stories for ages, in an effort to understand each other better. Sometimes authors combine their stories with other people's cultures, in order to make more interesting books. For example, in Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson series, the author combines Greek mythology with an urban American lifestyle, with multiple allusions to both ways of life. My third reason is, is that literature has inspired some of the most important and influential inventions of our time. The main inspiration for these inventions is fiction, specifically science fiction. For example, Igor Sigorsky, the inventor of the helicopter, was inspired by Jules Verne, Clipper of the Clouds, and Robert H. Go and Robert H. Goddard, the, the writer, the, the inventor of the, the rocket, was inspired by H. G. Wells' War of the World. So, so many of the most important and influential are the helicopter, the, the rocket, the submarine, the nuclear power, and the taser. These inventions are used around the world and are very important in everyday life. If this is what literature inspired today, what would it inspire tomorrow? My fourth reason is, is that if you read a lot when you were a kid, you will have an advanced knowledge of the English language, which can open up several opportunities in the future. For example, if you read a lot when you were a kid and have an advanced knowledge of the English language, you could become a teacher or a writer when you grow up. If you write works of literature while you have this job, you, uh, younger people might read them, and they might also get inspired to become a teacher or a writer, and the whole cycle starts again. Also, literature ha has been proven to, to help overall brain structure and increase the amount of white matter in your brain. In addition, literature helps you with your spelling and your vocabulary, due to the many words and spellings found in literature. My final reason is, is that if everyone around the world read books, we'd have a world full of people with an advanced sense of what is right and what is wrong, due to the many messages and morals found in books. Since everyone can interpret these messages differently, we'd have a world full of people with complex and diverse moral compasses. For example, two people might read A Christmas Carol, a novel by Charles Dickens about an old man named Ebenezer Scrooge, who's very unhappy but very rich, and a family called the Cratchit family who are very poor but very happy because they have each other, and one reader might think that the message is that money isn't everything due to Scrooge's unhappiness and apply it to their lives. One other, while another reader might think that the message is that family is everything and apply it to their lives. I've just given you my reasons for how literature can save the world. It innovates, it motivates, it inspires, it creates, and it unites. So tomorrow, instead of turning to other forms of entertainment, pick up a book. Because enough of us start reading again, just like our favorite characters, we can not only change the world, we can save it. Thank you.